This week, we discuss the racist church massacre in Charleston, North Carolina, and what I believe led up to it, which is the Rachel Dolezal case, or, or more precisely, the handling of her case, where it's this huge national story that just wouldn't die. It just stayed and stayed and stayed. In Charleston, North Carolina, a 21-year-old white male, a white supremacist, attacked the Emanuel AME Church, and he did something unusual. He sat for an hour with his victims before killing them. Very unusual. He was welcomed into the church and actually participated in, and interacted with people. Um, this is a very famous church with a very long history. The pastor was known to President Obama. In fact, uh, the church was known to President Obama. Um, and in addition to being a famous pastor, the pastor was also a state senator. Now, immediately prior to this attack, um, there have been days and days and days of unrelenting attacks on a black identified white woman who passed herself off as black. Um, but what was interesting was how big the story became and why there was so much venom. Now, from blacks, uh, some of the venom is, well, what next? You know, you get a little mad every time. Uh, you know, like Iggy Azalea raps and sounds like she's from a housing project. You go, come on, what next? But maybe there's some of that. Maybe it feels like territorial and, and logical. But why the white venom? And what blew my mind was that, you know, everyone's talking about, like, from the right, apparently, there were people saying, well, if you can change your gender, why can't you change your race? Now, it's kind of interesting that the conservatives would say that, because the real problem here is that people were attacking her as though she had done something so wrong and so bad that it should be a national story for you know, more than a week. Now, this was, I feel, compounding on the situation. If you look at it from a different view, if you're a white male, and you're a racist white male, and here's this woman being attacked for hanging out with blacks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, what a strange situation. Now, this particular woman has black siblings and black children. You know, you know whether she, you know, like Bruce Jenner uh, wears a dress, and, but he's not uh, had sexual reassignment surgery. I mean, is that lying? Um, well, we're told that it's not. So, why the venom? The fear is, is that blacks could do the same. So, we say that, well, no black could get away with that. Well, if it is allowed to say, well, I identify as another race, and you say, I identify as white, even though you have no white genes, you're like the watermelon man, I'm, you know, a white guy stuck in a black body, you can put white on an employment application it wouldn't be lying and if you could do that no matter how dark you were if you were confronted with your race you have to say well what's that matter it's not supposed to matter and it's not lying because i'm allowed to identify as what i want you basically are talking about the end of racism as we know it where the legal structure forces you to say what you are and because of the anti-discrimination laws they're not supposed to be asking anyway so the real message is is to black people so the attack on Ms. Dolezal is really aimed at black people. It's saying, don't try this at home. You guys don't dare, because you see how we're attacking her. Imagine how we'll attack you. You won't even make the news. We'll just lock you up in a jail for it. So the question is, 
is the missing point of identity. So if we said that race is as fluid as gender and that someone can identify as one thing, you have physical parts that are different from the physical parts of a woman, but you feel and identify as a woman, that's okay. So if you have melanin, this is just like a single gene or something, you have melanin that makes your skin dark, why can't you identify as someone who has less melanin? So uh, you, you wouldn't be able to be prosecuted for putting white on an application. So this is the second to last bastion of slavery. And this is what's going on. So this entire debate and this entire thing of Rachel Dolezal's determination that identifying as black is, is sort of like inflaming the anger and hatred of white supremacists everywhere. I mean, just as you would expect attacks by radical Islamists if people were burning Qurans or, or painting pictures or doing things and creating pictures of their prophet, this is the same thing. This is the same thing. And this disaffected this white supremacist reeled at the attack on a white woman who is cloaked in blackness with black kids, a black man, and black ideals, teaching black you know, subjects. To him, the false cry of rape is the explanation for this. He confuses black people with other groups because what he says uh, at the shootings is, you are raping our women and taking over the whole country. Black people aren't taking over anything. Black people are in, is suffering a decline. We're, we're a smaller minority. Is they're importing other minorities to take over, which is part of the whole thing. But he uses this ancient false cry of rape, which is constantly used and constantly as an attack against black people. Whenever you have nothing else to use, you just accuse them of rape. It doesn't matter. You were on a different planet. You were in a spaceship. You were up on the moon. They'll still accuse you. Um, so the tradition of lynchings against black men, no matter how cloaked, no matter how uh, obfuscated, um, are committed by the politicians from Obama to Cuomo. The traditional racist claim of false rape is alive and well, and very current. So, this young, disaffected white male uh, commits a mass killing. Now, the great majority of whites, particularly males, are on a decline. While their pain may not be as great as black males, or as the black community, um, it's still real, yet they're ignored and mocked by so-called liberals who are not liberal and tricked by conservatives who are not conservative to give more to the 1% that's causing them the pain to begin with. So while everyone's playing into this black versus white uh, game, these 1% Illuminati look on... <laughs> They see the displacement first of factory jobs sent overseas, then lower level jobs uh, displaced by illegal, oh I'm sorry, undocumented immigrants. So it's sort of like if you rob a bank, you didn't rob the bank because it's not illegal, you just made an undocumented withdrawal. So you have your union jobs destroyed by subcontracted labor. Now Disney is displacing high-paying tech jobs with subcontracted labor using phony H-1 visas. Now, Disney backed away from that, but that's just because they got caught. In every profession, lawyers, doctors, everybody's being outsourced and replaced and tricked 
And so all these jobs, you say, oh, if you get a high-paying tech job, you're in good shape. Well, no, you're not, because they're going to ship people from other countries and pay them half. You're going to fire you, tell you to spend a month training the people who are replacing you, and have this contracted labor with visas. So if they cause any trouble, you just stop sponsoring them. They get sent back home. Basically... All of these things, in real terms, uh, all of these things are going on. White men and white people in general should see the black community and black men as their future. We are the canaries in the United States coal mine. All of these scams were tried on us first and perfected. They then expanded these scams to include the entire country. But many of these people in the white community lack the foresight to see just what's going on, to see how these games of the black and white uh, color, color game that's being played against everybody, to see how the justice system and its attacks on the black men are an immediate danger to the white community. They're next. That's what's going on. They've built a pattern of ignoring the rules and the laws. And now that there's no official Jim Crow, well, we're, we wink when it, it's, uh, you know, the rule of law is bent against some black guy. And now you winked at it, but now that's the official rule of law. And so sooner or later, because it's technically colorblind, boom, it hits you. You have to understand that we are in a strange situation because the 1% are relentless. They won't give up a dime. They won't give up an inch. They're eroding everybody. So, how do you tell slaves in a society? Here there's a mass shooting. Why is there a mass shooting? I mean, one guy with a weapon can kill nine people? Well, where are the other people with weapons? Well, we're told, don't worry about it. You, you, you put your trust in the hands of professionals who aren't there because they're not going to just stay and guard you. You are divorced from the right to defend yourself. How do you tell slaves in a society? You tell the slaves of a society by their inability to defend themselves. Slaves are not allowed to defend themselves. So when you hear the gun control calls, oh, how did people get guns? You know, basically what you're hearing is master protect us. And then, after all, you don't have guns to protect yourself. Next thing you know, the people who are supposed to be protecting you are shooting in the back like Walter Scott. They're killing you. <laughs> Just the entire situation is bizarre. Gun control was specifically created in response to the Black Panthers, without question. Any white male with racist views and a murderous heart can get hired as law enforcement. It's that simple. So the racists get the guns and the racists get the badges. And, you know, even sometimes what they'll do, like here in Brooklyn, there was a murder caught on tape. And a guy with a badge basically came up, attacked someone unarmed, and shot them when they raised their hands to keep from being punched in the face. A, a, a textbook murder. A textbook murder. And got away with it in a city with a, with a mayor with a black wife and black children, identifiably black children, with one with a big fat afro. You can get away with shooting them. Even, even if you have a badge, even if you're black, you can get away with killing black people because the badge makes you a licensed killer who can kill black people at will. Black or sort of black, whatever you want. 
And black people are not allowed to defend themselves. Even if they're unarmed, just raising your hands to block your face from punches is enough to allow them to kill you without repercussions. And this is with a black DA who we voted into office to replace a white DA who was being racist. Oh, well, the DA has a badge, you see. And even though he may have run on, on a platform of saying he was going to stop the racist application of justice, well, if it's a guy with a badge shooting a black guy, it's okay as long as he meant to do it. Now, if you're a Chinese rookie and you're opening up a door because you're a klutz, you don't know how to hold your gun because you're a stupid rookie, and your gun fires by accident because you're an idiot rookie who shouldn't even be there, and, and definitely shouldn't be there with another rookie, and with no intent to kill because you're too clumsy to even have an intent to kill, you couldn't have made the shot if you tried, well, that will charge you with because you didn't mean to kill the black guy. That was a lucky shot. And we don't like lucky shots. We want murder. We want intentional premeditation. We want the intent to kill the black guy. We look him in the eye and blast away. Or shoot him in the back. And, you know, as we're going to talk about later, you know, down south in, in, in North and South Carolina, you get caught on tape killing a, committing a murder. Even if you have a badge, you're going to get taken down for murder. They're going to try at least. But here, nope. You won't even face a day in court. You won't face a, a night in the slammer for committing a murder if you have a badge. And you intended to kill. You meant to kill. You stalked people. So, you know, they have surrogate races. So, you know, if no white guys want to commit a murder, no white guys want to go kill a black guy, well, they have these black guys with badges that they'll send out and do it for them. Sort of like autopilot. These guys are like throwbacks to the days of slavery. And it's still slavery. And remember, you have no right to defend yourself. And that's the beauty of it. Because you can't defend yourself. The thugs all have guns. Why? Well, because half of them are working for the cops any damn way. And then the, the cops are supposed to be there to protect you, but, well, how can they protect you? You can't defend yourself, and they don't have, they, they didn't assign one to be your personal bodyguard. How can they protect you? Oh, after you're shot by the armed thugs, they armed with the guns. Well, they'll come and protect your corpse on its way to the morgue. Now, let's talk about the meaning of race. Now, what's interesting is is that the way they are attacking Dolazai for race, I'm not talking about the black people, even though, you know, of course, some of them are pawns and whatever, but they, there are different issues there. But from the major media um, that's attacking, you know, on TV oh, we caught you lying, that sort of thing, is because she, by selecting to be black, and not just blackface, blackface is an insult. You're just painting it on for a day or two. You're, you're doing it uh, for, like, comedy, like, embarrassing comedy. This is, this is trying to pass as black. And while talking about black people passing as white, it's very flattering if you're white. You know, it means that, well, that's the, the master race, and that's what's good and, and pure, and that's what people would want to be, blah, 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 of course, is the way they would have this uh, feel. So when she's instead successfully passing as a black woman, particularly being completely white with blonde hair and blue eyes it's very unflattering and they're attacking her it's interesting because a story that you know I mean, you say well, what if it was the opposite well there was a story where it was the opposite 
There's a fellow named Leo Felton who began having a role in prison white supremacist gangs. And he became like a, a head of his prison's uh, white supremacist group. These white supremacist groups, of course, since there's so many white guards, the group includes inmates and guards. And just to prove that, just a couple of months ago, in March, the FBI arrested two prison guards in Florida for a murder plot against an inmate. And they were members of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> So, if they'd known what they were doing, they should have applied for work here in New York City. And, like, happened a, a couple of months ago, you can just take your gun as a prison guard and shoot someone in Brooklyn and know that you're protected. Anyway, I digress. Now, this fellow, Felton, actually became sort of like a scholar of white supremacy. And he's half black, so his father's black. He came up with his race is what a man feels. The Nazi, the the Nazi version of race is very biological and you exterminate everyone who's not like you. Well, this was that it's what a man feels. So it's pretty much what the transgender community has been accepted by society at large on the same process. In response, the Nazi uh, white supremacists talked about the definition and that what their response is to him is pretty much what the major white media's response to Dolazai is, which is, well, you're stuck with what you are and you can't change it. <laughs> and it's just so interesting how the white supremacist organizations sound a lot like the white supremacist media uh anyway but uh, that's taking it a little bit uh a little bit too far but i just feel that there are parallels there that have to be pointed out so it's interesting how the leo felton story was nowhere near as large as the rachel dolezal story and the underlying assumptions of Leo Felton are very flattering to white supremacist viewpoints, and the opposite is true of Dolazai. And black people should look at that because this has been used against people in strange and unfortunate ways. There was a young man who wanted to be a police officer, and he put on his application that he was white. His parents were white, he looked white, everything about him was white, and they come to find out that he had a great-grandmother who was part black, and therefore they rejected him on the basis that he quote-unquote lied about his race. The question is, is how black was the grandmother? I mean, once you go back a certain uh, amount anyway, you know, what, what are we in the antebellum south? I come from a different, uh, uh, basically my family is quite the opposite, anti-passing family and myself, uh, so light people who do not pass, uh, no matter what. My grandfather was, he's very light, and he was classified as white in the South and put in a white unit of the army, and he put up such a fuss that... He was moved to the correct unit. Something like that actually happened to me. I won't go into now. And lo and behold, you know, looking back at it, it was just the best thing that I did. I followed my grandfather's example, just in terms of classification. But in the end, we have to look at this and say there's a hypocrisy here dealing with race, and this hypocrisy is deadly. And we have to come to grips with it, understand that this hypocrisy is deadly, and look at this Dolazai case as a chance to say, who are you to even have us answer a question as to what our race is? That should be off limits, no one should ask, and you can't penalize anyone for it, because we're sick of being discriminated against. Give us our rights, we demand them. 
that's it for Rent Wars this week. Thank you for watching. Check out Rent Wars episodes online. Go to our website, www.rentwars.com, or to our YouTube channel that's on youtube.com, and you can pick up episodes of Rent Wars. Uh, all of our most recent episodes are, are up there. Uh, our new episodes are going to be up there uh, going forward, and our old episode library uh, from our past 10 years, uh, that which wasn't destroyed by corrupt federal judges, that is, uh, will be put up there uh, piece by piece as well over time. So check out RentWars.com and see uh, episodes of Rent Wars and share episodes of Rent Wars with your friends who aren't fortunate enough to have cable television.